what is up guys if you're watching this that means you got another day now today's video is gonna be a little more serious because I'm gonna tell you guys all the worst parts about being a so-called influencer it's about that time again Now before you guys rage in the comments and be like, oh my god, you're not even an influencer, you don't even have a billion followers and blah blah blah. Look, I recognize this, I already know. Yeah, look in the bottom, I've got like a little over 5,000 followers. Across all my platforms, I'm working with a little over 65,000, which I think qualifies me as at least a micro-influencer. But here's the deal, I work with a lot of heavy hitter influencers. They've talked to me a lot about what it's like to have that many people essentially following every move of your life. And now that my channel's starting to grow, my TikTok starting to grow and my Instagram is starting to grow. I'm getting small doses of what these I'm getting small doses of what it's like to become a quote unquote influencer. And I wanna talk about some things that, well, other influencers don't talk about. Because as you guys are all chasing to grow your pages as fast as you can, you wanna get those 10,000 followers on Instagram so you can do the swipe up. You wanna get 20, 50,000 subs on YouTube so that you can do this full time. You want 100, 200,000 followers on TikTok so every time you do a little dancey dance that you can get five, 10,000 views on that video. I try to avoid my phone first thing in the morning for a couple of reasons. The first one is it really sucks. Like waking up to a ton of notifications and I know like, I already know there's gonna be people who are like, oh my God, your life is so hard. You have notifications to wake up to and you're in, you're just a YouTuber in Hollywood. Like I, look, this isn't like my only life. Like I lived a life before this. I was in the military and that life wasn't very easy. It, it, there's other people that had harder lives than that, but look like I'm just giving you guys some insight The point of this video is to help you the next time that you're prepared to make a comment or engage with any page 500 followers or 5 million and hope that whatever you decide to type is something positive That is the only point of this video when I wake up in the morning and let's just say I had a TikTok that did very well If I had a TikTok that did a hundred thousand views I probably have anywhere from 500 comments on that video of those five Let's just say 500 comments at least a hundred of them and sometimes more are very negative are just pure hateful. One of my most recent viral TikTok videos did 1.4 million views. What was it? It was me plugging an electric plug into a Porsche Taycan. That video garnished so much hate Everything from there's other ways or easier ways to open the little trap door on the outside to the fact that I had one clip of me pushing the button inside to and it cut to a clip of one of my friends who was a girl plugging it in. So obviously they saw her nail and a lot of people freaked out that the hand changed. I had a lot of people get very upset with the way that I pronounced Tycon, Tycon. Who cares? I had a lot of people upset with the fact that I was flexing the car that I didn't even own. At any point in the video did I say that I own the car, it was parked at a dealership. You could see the dealership in the video, but it doesn't matter because people that watch the video either have never been in a Taycan or will never be in a Taycan and that upset them. Another good example of this is I was talking to a very big automotive YouTuber that at one point gave away a supercar and he was talking about all the hate he got for giving away a supercar. Which I thought was crazy because does anyone know how much a supercar costs? Because last time I checked, it was like six figures. Like the amount of money I've made in my life all put together, he was giving that away. And there were people that were upset about it. And he said, you know what? I could give away one of these cars to every single person that asked for one. And there would still be a large chunk of people upset that theirs was blue. And the bad part is, he's right. You can do everything you want to please as many people as you can on a social media platform platform and there will still be a large chunk of people upset no matter what. I'll give you another example. My Mustang. It's a V6. It's painted like this. It looks silly. We know this. Now, I'm pretty excited to boost it this week, but there's a lot of people that are very excited for the boost. You know, congratulations. You saved up for something that cost $8,000 with a $22,000 salary. You're spending it on a car so that you can get your YouTube channel off the ground. Like, this is a big financial risk. It's probably a dumb one, but you know what? Congratulations, you're actually pulling it off. And I love those people. There's also a large group of people that are like, you should have bought a V8. Why are you spending this money, much money on a V6 Mustang? Or why did you blue camo it? Why didn't you green camo it? 
or why do you live in Hollywood? Why don't you live in Texas? Like, why are you paying taxes here? And it's like any move I make, it, it, and here's the here's the worst part. I could have a V8 Mustang. I could have the latest and greatest GT500. I could put the biggest supercharger known to man and make it do 2,000 horsepower, and there will still be guys in the comments that say, ah, could have been a Supra. You literally can't please everyone, and I know this because there are other YouTubers out there literally buying hypercars, Paganis and Bugattis, and there are people genuinely in the comments saying, why didn't you get a Senna? When you wake up to these types of comments, and, and the reason why I want you guys to know this is because these large creators who have three, five plus million subscribers, followers, whatever, you think your comment is invisible to them, but I promise you they see them. There are enough of you in the comments making negative statements that it just adds up. Of the thousand positive comments, all it takes is one, whether it's genuine or not, whether you have one follower or a thousand, that is negative enough and the timing is right for that large creator to see it and it will ruin their whole day or maybe even more than that. And I wish I could say that, you know, these comments don't get to these creators and some creators handle it better than others, but I'm being 100% real and I think I speak for a lot of other creators when I say that they do get to us. They absolutely do. And the more that it repeats, it's like a self-reaffirming cycle that whatever you do is not good enough. And I know that's hard for some people to grasp, especially if they don't have a following and they're like, oh, you know, it's so easy for you because you do have a following. It actually becomes more difficult the more followers you get because as your audience grows, yes, you're support grows, but a large amount of blind hate grows as well. And unfortunately, a hate comment holds a lot more weight than a positive one. So it takes a lot more positive reaffirming support, essentially, to cancel out just blind hate. I know that logic doesn't make sense, and it didn't make sense to me until I got a following myself and I am experiencing it firsthand. Because I've been friends with these really large influencers that compla complain about this thing that I'm experiencing and I was like oh gosh you know like you know when I have a million followers I'll probably handle that a lot better probably won't get to me like you know they talk about mental health issues which by the way I'm not experiencing they talk about mental health issues they talk about struggling on whether or not to keep their channel going they talk about you know not knowing you know what to do with their own lives because they feel that they're just at the mercy of constantly trying to please you guys and some of these big creators get to the level where they are so mentally damaged that they cannot come back from it and they last and they stay. Look at all the Disney stars that were huge as kids. They got famous too fast. They got famous before they learned how to be famous and it, it, it corrupted them for their whole life. And now that we have social media, so many of us can become famous overnight and then we realize once we have a bunch of people following us that it really isn't easy at all because there is so much demand for you to please everyone and you never will. Imagine waking up every day and knowing that whatever you do will not be good enough for everyone. And that's, you know, coming to terms with that is part of being quote unquote an influencer. And as an influ micro influencer, whatever, my job is to do my best to impact as many of you in a positive way as I can, hence the point of this video, understand that some of you either aren't going to understand that or are going to just hate it regardless. I'll give you another example. I posted a photo a couple months ago of two very well-known TikTokers in a Ferrari. I was really proud of the shoot because one, I was proud to know these two TikTokers. Like, one of them is arguably one of the biggest TikTokers in the world right now. And she came to hang out with me. I thought that was so cool. I also had a third friend with a Ferrari who was willing to let us borrow this for this shoot. So I had two famous friends, one with a Ferrari, and they were able to come together to make a vision of mine come true. I put together a photo, I uploaded it the same day quickly because I was eager to share something that I thought was cool. And the first comment that came in was from somebody that I had been following for years and looked up to and their words were something along the lines of, this made me cringe. Imagine working to put something together that you are proud of and then putting it out into the world, expecting positive feedback and somebody that you care about immediately came back with something hateful. That is what it's like sometimes to be in my shoes or another creator's shoes. I uploaded 
a photo two days ago. In the caption, I said there are two types of people on my comment sections. There's the type that is excited to promote you no matter what. And then there is the type that likes to criticize you no matter what. Now, don't get me wrong. Criticism is perfectly fine, especially if it comes from a place of understanding or genuine care to try to help level you up. And it comes in the form of a private message. Criticism that is broad or just hateful on a public forum is never okay. Because not only does it make me look stupid, but it eggs other people on to create that same type of energy in my comment section. So I made this post, right? And I said, there are two types of people. Please be the type of person that only basically promotes in the comments because I cannot remember the last time that I saw someone else's work and then hit them with something in the comments that was hateful or critical without their solicitation. And I uploaded today, less than 24 hours from that last post, a picture of a Mustang, and I had someone that was upset with the placement of the fake sun I added to the photo. Who cares? I stayed up late last night spending 45 minutes on one photo edit so that I could post something because I have to post every day. And I woke up this morning to some guy I've never met that left a comment because he was upset where my fake sunrise was placed on a photo of a priceless car that I was lucky to even see in real life. What? I just wanted to put some insight on what it's like to wake up to a ton of notifications, which is why I am desperately trying to remove my phone from my morning routine because it is absolutely toxic. It is a lose-lose situation to open your phone in the morning. Two reasons. One, if you get a lot of positive comments, if you get a lot of awesome engagement, you get dopamine and then your brain craves that for the rest of the day. Bad. Or number two, you get, like I got this morning, some kind of comment from some kind of person who really doesn't matter and it shouldn't get in your head, but because it's the first thing that you read in the day, your brain wants to hang on to it for some reason. And even though you know you should let it go and it means nothing because that person's talking about a fake sunshine, you still hang on to it for whatever reason. So it's a lose-lose. You really can't win when you open your first thing in the morning. The other thing I need to talk about is the absurd amount of time that I spend replying to as many comments as possible and every single DM I get. I wish that some of you guys could spend just 24 hours in my DMs. I have almost 18,000 followers on Instagram, which is great. I love it, but and I know I could have more. I know I could have a lot less. This is what it looks like in the day of the life of 18,000 followers. I get such an absurd amount of DMs from people that are literally just saying, hi, what's up? And then I say, hi. And then they say, cool. Or they'll say, hope you're well. And I'll be, thanks. Hope you're doing well. And it's just this dry back and forth conversation because people are just bored and they're looking for something to do. I post some of the most amazing, beautiful women in the world. And I get DMs from people that are wondering why I didn't shoot this person, or why I haven't posted this type of girl, or why I haven't shot this type of car, or why I shot this car in this location and not that location. They get upset about the content that I'm not posting just as much as they get upset about the content that I am posting. And then I have DMs from people that want something from me. Oh my God, I get asked at least five times a day for people, or, or for me to follow people back. I get DMs from people that want feedback on their work. I get it. I love that you appreciate my work, but I wish you knew how many people every day wanted me to sit down and critique their feed, which I would love to do all day long, but I just can't. I, I, there's not enough me to do that. And then I get a lot of DMs from people that want shout outs or me to promote their car meet or me to promote or share their work. And it's, it's so much demand from me because they feel like they support my page. So I am obligated to do an equal or greater amount of support to theirs, which guys, I love that people support my page. I swear to God, it is just the greatest feeling ever to have an audience that is just so dedicated. And I, you gotta believe me when I say that I spend so much time and effort trying so hard to support you back as best I can, but it physically is impossible for it to be a two-way street because there is one of me and there are 65,000 of you. If I spent as much time on each of you that you 
spend on me, if you wanted it to be a real two-way street, there would have to be 65,000 of me. I hope that math breaks down logically. And then if you multiply my audience, it may be two million followers, and you're like, hey, I, this guy never replies to my comments. Duh, because he has 47,000 comments on every post. I'm sorry if he doesn't see your comment, but you know what he sometimes or she sometimes might see? That one time that you leave a comment that says something dumb like, wish you didn't wrap your car this color, they see those comments. Even though they don't reply to them, it means something. Now, I wish I didn't have to make this video, and I really don't, and I really hope that it is perceived in the way of, of, of just sharing a perspective where you guys are able to see, oh, my comments, my engagement as a follower has a large impact on the people I follow, whether they have a micro audience or a large audience. I'm telling you right now that you matter, and everything that you leave is a fingerprint of who you are. And whenever you leave negative comments or something hateful or even something you might not think is hurtful, hurtful or intended to be hurtful, if it is not genuinely positive, it might be perceived as negative. Try your best to be as absolutely overwhelmingly positive, grateful, and supportive as you can on public forums to the people that you follow because we get so much hate on one end that your comments of support and love and care are the only thing that keeps us uploading on a daily basis because those of you that do support mean the world to us as creators, and you're the reason why we wake up and know that even though every single move we make is going to be judged and criticized, that it's okay, because at least some percentage of you guys are going to just wanna see us win and are gonna support us no matter what, and those are the guys that we do the uploads for. Those are the guys that I stay up so late editing one photo for, even though it's gonna get bashed for where I place the sun. And I and I, I get like blind support, you know, like if a photo is genuinely trash, like a homie can reach out and be like, look fam, like this is fire. If you maybe did this, if, if I may, you know, I have some ideas to help you improve, but you know, take it or leave it. There's a reason why I never look at my TikTok comments anymore. None of them ever. If you mention me on TikTok, probably not gonna see it. I deleted my Facebook. Everything that posts on Facebook is automated because Facebook has become so toxic. And Instagram is right there at just me not caring about replying to comments anymore, me not responding to DMs because it is so toxic. So I leave you with this. Next time you post a comment. Go, to, actually I tell you what, mm, challenge, go to a creator that you know of that you love to hate on, somebody that you think is really dumb or somebody that you think is just doing everything wrong, they're in your space and they're kind of the joke of your space, go to that person's page and leave a comment on their last three posts. And don't just leave the fire emojis. Go look at the picture of their blue Mustang or go look at the picture of their selfie or whatever it is they've uploaded and comment something with at least four words that is so genuinely heartfelt, I wanna see you win energy on the latest three posts and just see if you get a reply. And if you don't, know that that person probably read those comments and it may have offset the other comment that they got that day about where they placed the sun in their photo of a Mustang. Guys, I upload videos every single Tuesday, every single Thursday, every single Sunday. I don't care how many haters we get. We are still shooting for 10,000 subscribers, baby. I'm gonna build this massive audience and we're gonna take over the world. Even with the haters, I need your engagement anyway. I will catch you guys at the next episode. It's all